Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Uh, welcome to a uh, different video than what I normally do. So I work a lot in the NSC stuff. I've been doing some over the wire bandit. Uh, and every now and then when I find something new and exciting on the Fortinet FortiGate product suites, um, I decide to make a video on it because I think other people will find it uh, interesting like I do. So today's, um, we need to start with a licensed FortiGate. This won't work with the trial machines, unfortunately. Uh, I know a lot of the, the cool stuff can be done with the trial licenses. This is not one of those. So keep in mind as I go through this, this is a fully licensed machine, uh, not a trial. So the first thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, if you're not familiar with the Fortinet product suite, Fortinet has uh, sort of like their top three. And that's the FortiGate, which is the firewall, Forti Manager, which is your manager appliance or, or VM for a fleet of FortiGates. It helps you centrally manage all the FortiGates. Then there's Forti Analyzer. Uh, again, it's either an appliance or it's a, a virtual machine. And it aggregates all the logs from your FortiGates and your Forti Managers. Uh, and both of those are here. You know, this is a Forti Manager. Nothing uh, real crazy without diving into it. They can do some incredible things, fully featured, very powerful devices, each in their own regards. But sometimes, either due to cost, the organization can't uh, afford the additional licensing and, and maintenance for the 40 manager, 40 analyzer, or uh, I'm certain that this is out there. There's somebody who has a 40 gate in their home uh, and they just want some additional features above and beyond that. They're a technologist, they like to play around with things. In this video, I'm going to show you what the 40 gate cloud management includes what it does, and what you can do with it. So that's the cool thing I figured out this week, and I wanted to pass it along and just throw it out there in the community and see what comes back. So um, I'm going to get into that in just a minute, but uh, let me point something out here. So under Security Fabric and then Settings, if you notice, uh, right now we have nothing ticked on. Uh, Central Management comes on by default, I guess. I didn't turn that on. And right now we've got uh, three types, and FortiGate Cloud is selected, and there's the option to activate it. Uh, so it looks like you can activate it here, but I'm going to go back to the dashboard here because this is probably how most people do it. I'm going to click not activated. Activate it. Uh, you're going to need an account. If you don't already have one, you're going to have to create one. Put it in there. And then it's it's activating right now, and it will tell you pretty verbose uh, if you put the wrong password in there because I'm an idiot and I've done that a few times. So now that it's activated, you can see status is activated, log retention. You're using the free license. Let's point that out, make it even more obvious. Um, but if you want to get into the cool stuff, click that, click launch portal. That opens this up and flies out. And once you're in here, if you have any experience with the 40 manager or the 40 analyzer, this is where it gets kind of cool. You can get in here and let's start with management. And you can see this starts to look pretty familiar. Oh, what's to say? All admin passwords are empty for those devices. Management service has not been enabled. All right, well, let's throw, a, throw some credentials in there and see what happens. Enable management. Configuration of this device has not been initialized in the 40 gate cloud. Please set central management. All right, so it's telling me I need to go back here and set central management. So security fabric, settings, central management, 40 gate cloud. It looks activated. I bet you it just hasn't sunk up yet. So let's give it a minute here. There we go. So I see these status. Um, the CPU and memory popped in there. I'm willing to bet if I try that again, it will work. Let's try that. Sure enough, there we go. So I was just a little too quick on the quick on the jump there. But um, if you're familiar with 40 Manager, this is probably starting to look kind of familiar. Uh, if you're not, then this is similar to what you see in the 40 Manager, uh, if I was to log in there and show you. Now this this manager is not managing that VM, so it's not going to be identical. This is managing a physical device. But you can see here, uh, roughly similar, you've, you've got some of the same things. This is the de device level settings, um, so it's not going to look like this guy here. But uh, if I go over here policy and objects and then take a look you can get an idea that hey this is starting to look kind of familiar again uh, firewall objects security profiles this is all 40 manager stuff if I come over here we can start to see policy and objects there's a firewall policies there's our services there's our address objects all of it starting to look pretty familiar so this is cool if you were 
you know, a small organization, you can't foot the bill for um, for 40 manager. You wanted some sort of centralized way to manage a small amount of devices. This looks like it would be a great first stop on your way to growing into a 40 manager if you can't foot the bill, if you can't get management buy-in, whatever it is. Now, the same thing goes for this analysis tab. This is a lot like the uh, 40 analyzer. Uh, you have a log view, you have event management, you have reporting. It comes with a few reports. Now, 40 Analyzer comes with a ton of reports. Uh, it looks like, you know, as you would expect, this is like the freemium version of those two suites uh, or product platforms. So everything's stripped back a little bit, but it's still pretty dang cool for what you get here. Now, the coolest part I thought of all this, and everyone's going to say the coolest part is this or that or whatever. I'm a security engineer by trade and background, so when I seen that this included a 40 sandbox, uh, I was kind of curious. Uh, now, there are some limitations around this. Um, you can configure a firewall policy here. Let me go back in here. Let's reload that. Sandbox. Oh, yeah, that's right. So if you notice here, if you go to settings, security fabric settings, sandbox inspection, uh, you, you know, well, what server? What? What do I put in here? Great question. By default, I don't know why this is, there's some GUI configurations that are not available here. You have to go into the command line and turn them on before you can use the 40 Gate Cloud Sandbox. So I'll show you that right now. So go ahead and hit that uh, fly open there. We're going to do config sys global. Then we're going to do set GUI 40 Sandbox, I think. Yeah, 40 Sandbox Cloud, and we're going to tag that with Enable. And we're going to end that to write it to memory and save it. Then we're going to execute 40 Cloud Sandbox. Whoa, slow down there. 40 Cloud Sandbox Region. This is specifying the region that you want to send your files to. Uh, you don't want to, you know, if you're in North America, you probably don't want to send them to Europe. If you're in Europe, you don't want to send them to Asia. We'll hit enter there. We have uh, Europe, Global, and Japan, and US. I'm gonna go ahead and select three for the US. It confirms, cool. All right, so I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna go back over here, reload this, and there you go. Now you see we have 40 sandbox type, and we have this 40 sandbox cloud option. And in here it looks like we can change our, our region if we wanted to. Uh, but at this point, we could go into, I'm not going to, but we could go in here, we could make a firewall policy and in here, we could tell it to uh, send any suspicious files to the 40 Sandbox cloud. Now, the cool part is, is you don't have to do any of that to send files to, to the 40 Sandbox cloud. If you are running a small team, a small security team, and you've instructed users to forward um, fishy looking emails, literally, you know, fishy, P-H-I-S-H-Y, that, that sort of thing. And they sometimes include attachments. And right now you're saying, well, what do I do with those? Do I send them to VirusTotal? Uh, what's our internal policy say? What are we allowed to do? With FortiGate and the FortiGate Cloud Sandbox, you now have the ability to take those files and you can send them up here if you wanted to. After you know, all those configuration steps are done there, you can then upload. And it says uh, you're limited to 10 uploads in a 24-hour period. Um, you know, for most small security teams, that's plenty. Um, you probably don't see that many. If you see more than 10 suspicious files that are unique and you have to upload them in a 24-hour period, you've got bigger problems. So that's kind of cool. You can send something up here. You know, I'll just grab that, throw it in there, and uh, let's see. It tells you it's waiting for processing. That's the other thing to keep in mind. You know, it's free, so you got to set your expectations accordingly. But uh, this is a best effort service, meaning... As you send files in or as um, things are, are happening, you're thrown into a queue. You're thrown into a line, and you're going to wait. And uh, I know the default wait or the default timeout for a lot of services that rely on the sandbox are 30 minutes. I don't know if that still exists with these on-demand records or on-demand on file submissions like this. Or uh, I'd have to imagine it'd have to be the same 30-minute window with the, uh, the FortiGate if it were to send a uh, potentially malicious file up to the 40 gates cloud sandbox waiting for a verdict to come back on that file if it does time out um, then you, you don't get a verdict you don't know what it was so just keep that in mind set your expectations accordingly but uh, you know I thought this was pretty neat and I've been rambling for almost 10 minutes now uh, and I didn't even cover half of what's in here not even 10% of what's in here uh, so let me know in the comments below if you thought this was pretty cool and you want to see more you want to kind of explore this and, and move around and see what you can do in this 
let me know. Uh, again, my name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans. And if you like what I'm doing here, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that bell to get notified as my videos are re released. Thank <music> you.